Well, happy new year. Another year over, welcome to 2025. I thought I'd go into some detail about the, our heat pump performance over the last year. So in this video, here's a set of charts and graphs to talk you through how we've got on the efficiency, the costs, the emissions, all of it. So to begin with some context for those of you that hasn't seen my channel before, if you have, I'll put a chapter in so that you don't have to watch this bit. But we had a five kilowatt Valent Aerotherm Plus installed in summer 2021. Uh, we live in a three bedroom Victorian terrace with an extension at the back of the house. Um, the house has loft, loft insulation, double glazing, but it also has an uninsulated ventilated floor, as well as original construction in most of the external walls. Although we're a Victorian terrace, we are exposed to a significant chunk of the cold due to the hill that we live on and the slightly smaller house next door. We were part of a research project back in 2021, so we were really fortunate to get our heat pump installed for free. And as part of that research project, two meters were installed, one on the electricity supply to the heat pump, the other on the pipework from the heat pump that we use to measure heat. The final bit of context is that the Met Office think that 2024 was provisionally the fourth warmest year on record following 2022, 2023 and 2014. At least the UK is warmer on average than it used to be. OK, so that's the context. Um, how have we got on this year living with a heat pump? Well, let's start big picture. Overall, the heat pump has delivered a whopping 14,971 kilowatt hours of heat. And to do that, it's used 4,266 kilowatt hours of electricity with an overall efficiency of 347% or a COP of 3.47. Obviously, we need more heat in winter months, so our electricity demand varies substantially month to month. So here's a graph of monthly heat output, uh, monthly heat out and electricity in. Heat in blue, electricity in orange. In January, we delivered nearly 2,850 kilowatt hours of heat and used 886 kilowatt hours of electricity. That's a lot. So looking back to January, it, it did have a meaningful cold snap that I did a video about, but if we assumed price cap rates, January this year would have cost us around 220 pounds just for heating and hot water. But that's not the end of the story. In February and March and actually November, the heat pump delivered just under 2000 kilowatt hours of heat for around 550, 600 kilowatt hours of electricity. And in December, 2.2 megawatt hours of heat for just over 600 kilowatt hours of electricity. The other two meaningful heating months were April and October, where we delivered over 1400 kilowatt hours of heat for around 375 kilowatt hours of electricity. So these are big numbers, and big numbers surely means big expense. We'll get onto that a little bit later. But you can see that the seasons, and particularly the temperature in different seasons, makes a real difference to heat pump demand, to heat demand and heat pump efficiency. If we plot average temperature of, of each month on this graph as well, you can see uh, as the temperature drops, the energy needed goes up significantly. So how does the temperature affect efficiency? Surely it's something like summer, it's high efficiency because it's warmer, winter, lower temperature, lower efficiency. Well, that's not quite true. In the summer, most of the energy goes into heating hot water, which tends to be at a lower efficiency as the heat pump is trying to reach higher temperatures to get to that 45, 48 degrees that we want to store in our hot water tank. So we actually see the lowest efficiencies during the summer. On average, about 290% in July and August. We tend to see the highest efficiency in the autumn, so in October, a whopping 391% efficiency. And the first half of the year followed a really nice curve of lowish efficiency in January, high in the spring and then dropping in the summer, which would have been lovely to see that curve to the end of the year too. But we didn't because November was that much colder, which meant an unseasonably low efficiency. Even if we delivered more heat in December, November was less efficient. So over the whole year, an efficiency of 347%. So for one, for every one kilowatt hour of electricity we used, we took two and a half kilowatt hours of heat from the air and we delivered a total of 3.47 kilowatt hours to our home. So we're using a little bit of electricity to move some heat from outside to the inside. Okay, next up, emissions. 
A heat pump still has some CO2 emissions associated with the electricity used to power it. But because of its high efficiency, it's using that much less energy to heat a space. And because the grid is getting cleaner and cleaner, a heat pump will get cleaner and cleaner too. In emissions reporting, we tend to use the average UK grid emissions, even though uh, emissions where I live in the northeast tend to, to be quite a bit lower due to the wind turbines in the region and the nuclear power station at Hartlepool. But best practice is, is, is to use the UK average grid emissions, which for this year are 207 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour of electricity that we use. So our emissions over the whole year for heating were around 883 kilograms of CO2. So how does this compare to a gas boiler? Well, let's assume that a gas boiler was about as efficient as it could be. Let's assume 95%. So every kilowatt hour of gas that we burn, we get 0.95 kilowatt hours of heat. To give us the same comfort as we've had this year, let's assume it would deliver the same amount of heat. So that 14,971 kilowatt hours would have used 15,758 kilowatt hours of gas. And again, using the UK average that would have emitted 183 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour of gas used, that would mean the emissions of 2,883 kilograms of CO2, almost exactly two tons more. So our heat pump delivering the same comfort would be 70% lower emissions than the most efficient gas boiler this year. An average gas boiler might be more like 85% efficiency, which would have had emissions of 3.2 tons of CO2. I should be fair to the gas boiler. I should add that we were nowhere near as comfortable with a gas boiler when we in the last year that we had it in 2020. And we would have used much less gas because I kept the heating off for much longer. So that last full year, 2020, before we got the heat pump, we used only 12,254 kilowatt hours of gas. So 2.2 uh, tons of CO2. So in 2020, we were quite a bit less comfortable we had regular, uh, can we turn the heating on style conversations or arguments and still had emissions of about 1.4 tons higher than this year with a heat pump. Again, if we look at this month by month, you can see how emissions vary throughout the year. For every month of the year, a heat pump would outperform a gas boiler substantially on reducing emissions. And what do we mean by one ton or a thousand kilograms of, of CO2? So, so for context, what one ton is like flying from Gatwick to Alicante three times, um, or from Heathrow to JFK in New York once, um, or it's a standard petrol car driving over 4,000 miles. So saving one and a half to two tons each year on our heating is a really great step. The last little bit of information about 2024 would be the costs to run a heat pump. Um, so some more context to begin with. In the UK this year, we've still had some regulation of the energy markets capping the price of energy uh, because of the high prices of gas worldwide, pushing up domestic energy prices here in the UK that we all had to pay. And let's just be clear, high energy prices are a fossil fuel problem, not a renewable energy problem. The price cap rate has varied throughout the year, but for simplicity, I'm going to use the most recent rates in my summary, which are 24.5 pence per kilowatt hour for electricity and 6.24 pence per kilowatt hour for gas. But I'd also point out that for most of the year, I've been on a smart tariff from Octopus. I've gone either been on Octopus Agile or Octopus Cozy. So our average rate over the last 12 months has been actually a bit lower at 17.58 pence per kilowatt hour. So quite a bit lower than the price cap. Okay, that's enough context on cost. Um, to run our heat pump at the price cap, it would have cost us £1,045 to deliver all the heat and hot water to our house. Comparing this to an 85% efficient gas boiler, that would have cost £1,085. A 90% efficient gas boiler would have cost £1,025, and a 95% efficient gas boiler would have cost £971. So potentially the heat pump could have saved just over £40, or could have cost us an extra 75. Um, but on Octopus Agile, assuming our average rate for the whole year, the price would be quite a bit lower at just under 750 pounds. So that's a saving versus a boiler of between 220 and 330 pounds. There are also smart gas tariffs from Octopus that track gas prices more closely, but let's not confuse things uh, another layer. Um, the savings a heat pump gives really depend on what you're moving from how much heat you use, 
uh, the efficiency of delivering that heat and what tariff you are on. So the numbers are pretty nuanced. But let's go back to some graphs. Looking month by month, you can see that the costs are pretty similar at the price cap each month. If we put Agile on that graph, you can see that throughout the year, costs are substantially lower using Octopus Agile. But this isn't an advert for Octopus Agile or Octopus in general. Um, but I am still with them and on one of their tariffs, but I'm now on the Octopus Cozy tariffs that are supposed to support heat pump use. Um, since switching to Cozy a few weeks ago, my average costs are a bit higher at, at just over uh, at about 20 and a half pence per kilowatt hour. But I think before I switched, the Agile prices were seeing some pretty high half hourly peaks that kind of scared me away. So uh, we're with Cozy now. But again, looking monthly, you can see that the savings vary throughout the year. Um, on the price cap, sometimes an 85% efficient gas boiler is cheaper to run. Sometimes a heat pump was. On Agile, a heat pump was always cheaper to run. Okay, loads of confusing numbers there, um, but that's pretty much the whole story. A heat pump in 2024 has kept us nice and warm in a Victorian terrace. It's reduced our emissions substantially, and it may have saved us a chunk of money this year. If it hasn't, it's more or less broken even with a gas boiler. And you know what? That's it. I hope that is helpful context. Do drop me a comment if it has been helpful and drop me a comment if it's not. Um, I'll do my best to respond to them. But also, please do like this video, share it with someone who thinks heat pumps don't work, uh, and please do subscribe to the channel. Coming up in January, I'm hoping to do some videos, including an update on our ripple energy savings for when the wind blows properly, um, how New Year's Eve taught me that too much of a good thing could be a bad thing, some lessons learned there, and maybe even some thoughts about electric vehicles. So please do subscribe, and I'll see you later in 2025.